Hello all. So, in previous class, we were discussing very important concepts that are overfitting, underfitting, variance, and the bias. Okay. So, we did had a discussion. good discussion over those concepts let me put them again overfitting underfitting and uh, variance and bias okay so according to what i told overfitting means when you are having high training accuracy but low testing accuracy underfitting occurs when you are having low training accuracy it doesn't matter we are not going ahead with the testing because once the model itself failed in the training so it's quite clear that the model will not going to perform good on the testing okay and here as per the question which is asked by the sir yesterday let us suppose you are having 60% training accuracy 60% testing accuracy still you are underfitted they are less and underfitted clearly means that model is unable to capture the patterns in the data point is clear that is what underfitting is okay overfitting that means here model is able to capture the data okay model is able to capture the data in overfitting but only during training okay but during testing it is getting failed okay so in training the high accuracy might be because of high variance okay variance means the distribution of data that means a deviation of a point from its mean that's what the variance is we do have standard deviation that is the square root of variance okay so if the distribution of data points is more variance is more in that particular case model accuracy is more that means it's uh, a fact in machine learning in data science that those features whose variance are more is more they are highly contributing in the model development and they do contribute the model to achieve high accuracy okay we are having certain more things related to it that i will be discussing ahead and bias means the error okay that means how much you are away from the actual okay so you can write predicted minus actual this is the actual value this is the predicted value you can change the terms also like uh, y a minus y p also because ultimately i want a positive error okay so that's the bias and there is a trade off there is a trade off between bias and the variance there is a fight between bias and the variance okay if variance is more bias is less if bias is more variance is less okay so this is how the trade off is present between bias and the variance okay and we can understand them 
by making uh, some like a representation i made an uh, chord okay and uh, here i am saying that high okay high values low value and uh, here also let me pick up on the row side high and low okay we are also let us say high and low so if i say here variance and the bias both are high okay high high variance of the bias both so this is i guess not a valid situation that variance is also high and bias is also high okay now if uh, variance and bias both are low okay uh, we do expect something out of it variance low that means model is not overfitted bias low that means model is not not underfitted so here we can say that okay we can agree with you that variance is less bias is also less so if we can make from here general model generalized model so yeah this is certainly a condition which we can accept then if variance is high for example variance is high bias is low okay for example variance is high so okay variance is high bias is low so model okay model variance high that means model contribute high accuracy okay model will contribute high accuracy kyunki error kam hai variance is more so model will contribute high accuracy okay but during training and during testing we have to confirm if during training and during testing this condition prevails that means variance is high bias is less so we can accept but if it happens that during training because of variance is high so accuracy is high but during testing we failed then we are not accepting then you overfitting then this will behave as an overfitting and if variance is low bias is high then this is underfitting okay then that will be a case of underfitting okay so just like now we can we can make okay like uh, variance bias high 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 low low high low low you can make a table if both are high if both are high so this is certainly a questionable situation variance is high that means model is capturing everything bias is high that means model is unable to capture so ye this is a questionable i am having a doubt over this thing ha huh, now variance is high bias is low okay so here you are getting good accuracy here accuracy is high okay so that will be like a best scenario but again we want this scenario to be prevail during training also and during testing also if does if it doesn't prevails then overfitting okay then overfitting here variance is less bias is high this is underfitting okay strictly underfitting because variance is less bias is high bias high error is high underfitting variance is low bias is low okay here we are saying that if you can make a generalized model we will accept you that means 
नाइदर अंडर फिटिंग नाइदर ओवर फिटिंग ओके यू आर इन बिटवीन ओवर फिटिंग अंडर फिटिंग ओके योर मॉडल इज इन बिटवीन दैट ओके यू आर गोइंग टू एक्सेप्ट ओके फाइन सो दिस इज हाउ वी डू कंसिडर the concepts overfitting underfitting bias and the variance fine and if you want to show them in form of a plot so let me make you overfitted plot see for example for example this is your results okay and uh, for the training okay let me change the color and uh, this is for the testing okay now again let me change the color so till this portion till this portion this is for training all right so during training and this the uh, the plot now which you are seeing that is for actual okay this plot is for actual actual plotting actual data and let us suppose these are the points predicted by the model and if they are coming over the actual during training if they are coming over the actual during training then we'll say okay model is able to capture the patterns in the data but during testing these points are away from the test data so during training during training the model is able to understand the patterns in the data that means red one was the actual points black ones are the predicted points and they are coming they are overlapping over the red so during training we are saying okay wow very good you are performing well but this model orange is the test data that is actual test data and these black points are the predictions over the test data and they are not they are coming far away from the ori the ori orange line orange okay that is the test data so here we can see that error is present error is high okay so during training you performed well but during testing you failed so this is the case of overfitting okay this diagram is for overfitting and for underfitting let me make you a diagram for example uh, this is the line and this is actual okay this is the actual data this line is for the actual data and let us suppose your model gave prediction like this this is the prediction given by the model that means points are very far away from the line you can see the errors okay these are the errors okay because here are the actual points and these are the predicted points so there is a big gap between the actual and the predicted so error is more okay so this is underfitting okay that means model is unable to capture the pattern in the data and it is giving the points it is giving the results which is not at all correct so this is underfitting okay so during training only it failed during the, I, i am not going ahead on the test during training if someone failed then how we can put that person in the testing obviously it will fail 
okay if someone is not performing well in the training we can't send them into the olympics and tell them that you can perform no not possible okay so this is the case of overfitting underfitting bias and the variance so we have to totally focus upon data and its distribution its representation that is what our data science and machine learning will be okay now let me share my entire screen and talk more about your types of machine learning that is supervised and unsupervised okay then i will switch to the maths part okay so as i told in my initial class that i hope you can see my screen okay because yesterday na i was keep on talking and you are keep on listening okay but uh, kindly do ping me that if you are unable to see the screen or if you are unable to hear the voice so machine learning in general is divided into two categories supervised and unsupervised there are other forms also but i am not discussing them right now i am just taking the two major forms and our complete course will be based upon these two okay unsupervised okay so supervised means you are learning under some guidance unsupervised means okay there is no guidance but you have to learn so learning learning will be there in both the cases okay learning will be there in both the cases but supervised means you do have a guidance unsupervised means you don't have a guidance here you have to work out from your side that is what unsupervised means so right now we are having the live class going on and i am teaching you that's a supervision okay now in terms of data for supervised in terms of data we say that if you are having a labeled data okay that means if you are having a labeled data then it is supervised okay labeled data that is supervised and if you are having unlabeled data then it is unsupervised so what does it mean sir labeled and unlabeled it means that if you are having target then it is supervised and if you are not having target then it is unsupervised but the question here came into my mind sir you are learning and you don't have a target sir how this is possible sir at least target to hone ka sir without target you don't do anything in your life how you can, how you can say that that you don't have any goal and you are learning something this is not possible ha huh? yes i agree with this this is not possible so you are learning in order to achieve your goal but you have to define it by yourself there will be something which you want to achieve but you have to define from your side that what you want to achieve here it's available that this is what you have to achieve come on go ahead here you have to explore from your side that what you want to achieve how you can achieve that thing okay fine so in terms of the data if i do make let us suppose this is your excel file data sheet okay and these are the columns okay this is your target y target y this is what the label is target x1 x2 x3 x4 these are the features independent features this is target y dependent feature dependent on these independence okay so we are having x we are having y and i already told you what is machine learning is about 
to identify the relationship okay to identify the relationship between x and y so here i'm calling this kind of data as labeled data why because i am available with the target y what i want to achieve okay however if i do talk about unlabeled unsupervised learning we are only having the features there is no y available okay we are having x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 but no y we are having only the training features okay by applying some algorithm by applying some technique by applying unsupervised machine learning you can make a target okay but you have to make right now it is not present okay let me make a red here okay initially with the data it is not present okay so i am separating this part okay don't consider just only consider from x1 till x5 so here you are available with the target and here you are not available with the target you have to apply some approach some technique some algorithm with the help of which you can create a target okay fine so again get back to the supervised so such kind of data which is having a target that's a labeled data and uh, this labeled can be in form of two types of labels can be there that means you can have two two kinds of targets they are called as regression and classification okay regression and classification the two kind of target you can have regression and classification that means if the value of y value of y or the target is continuous in nature if it is continuous in nature then it is a regression problem if the value of y is continuous in nature then it is a regression problem for example i told you what the continuous means 1.5 2.7 3.9 that means something which which you have to represent uh, in a class interval okay so if those kind of values are present here in the target then it is a regression problem okay however if you are having discrete or categorical values present in target so that will be a classification problem okay fine so this is how we do define supervised learning regression classification okay and subject to these we are having the algorithms okay for example regression we are having linear regression algorithm we are having support vector regression we are having decision tree regression random forest regression okay then we are having xg boost regression so these algorithms i am going to teach you in ml okay classification we do have these are the famous algorithms so i'm focusing upon them we are having logistic regression okay the name is logistic regression but it is actually a classification algorithm logistic okay we can have decision tree classifier random forest classifier xg boost classifier nave base 
classifier so these algorithms again we are going to cover in our course because i have been asked a question that sir what we are going to cover so that's what i am delivering here in the live class that these algorithms we are going to cover in regression and classification under supervised okay fine and then in unsupervised where we are not having any target or any label so there we are having again just like supervised we are having two further classifications here that is clustering and association okay clustering and association in clustering we do have various algorithms like the famous one is k means so clustering means grouping okay clustering means grouping of the data points so k means then we are having hierarchical clustering we are having db scan density based spatial clustering db scan and there are other algorithms also okay association that means to identify relationship between uh, the data okay to find that if we have purchased something what is the chance that we are going to purchase another thing based upon the current purchased okay so that is what an association means okay so we are having certain algorithms for association also like a priori algorithm okay actually we are having a market basket problem here market basket problem so we are going to solve this market basket problem with such kind of algorithms like a priori there are other algorithms also okay like eclet okay fine so we are having certain algorithms so these we are going to cover in unsupervised section okay so that will be the termination point of our ml okay if you study all these algorithms do the practical space upon it so that will be the termination point of our ml all right so this is how i structured the ml part okay and before starting any of the algorithm any of the technique we should be knowing the maths because we have to understand the data that's what the important is okay so here okay so yeah all these you can learn you can read as i will share you the notes you can study from them it's very easy i already discussed so this is the approach what you do follow in data science and machine learning these are the steps which you perform in data science and machine learning that means the first one is the data collection obviously now you have to work over the data so you have to collect the data fine so data is collected from various sources okay databases sensors web scraping server and many more there are various sources from where you do collect the data then uh, you have to clean the data because obviously the kind of data which you collect is uh, messy that's a raw data so you have to clean the data so there are obviously data cleaning steps just like handling the missing values remove the noise correct the inconsistencies in the data okay duplicates all now uh, you have to remove that is a data cleaning process then data analysis you have to explore the data you have to visualize the data creating visual representation so exploring analyzing the data statistically so you know uh, we we are focusing upon this maths now in this exploration only exploration and visualization okay the two main steps where maths plays a major role exploration and the visualization okay and then machine learning obviously again it's a mathematical model only machine learning algorithm you have to apply okay so again here the maths is there 
model, no? model and maths. Okay, to understand the relationship between X and Y, that will say that what is the pattern in the data. All right, then later on you can save the model, you can deploy your model. That will be the rest of the case. Okay, fine. Now, I'm not going to talk about the DL and the generative AI at the moment because that's not the part of our current study. This is the proportion of maths that you should know to approach data science, machine learning, deep learning, generative, whatever. Okay. So you can see with red portion, 35% linear algebra is important. Okay. So 35% it's uh, means good contribution. Then green 25% probability okay so again it probability in a, and statistics 25 percent so in total they will become 60 percent so if you know linear algebra probability and statistics the most of the fight you have won in data science and machine learning because they contribute about 60% of what you have to do in data science and machine learning. Then comes the calculus, 15%. Here we have to apply the calculus uh, for uh, your optimization, error reduction. And the calculus is much more uh, being a part of deep learning. Here also we use. Okay. Um, calculus but not much okay so 15 percent so to, in total now 75 percent if you are good 75 percent calculus added then algorithms complexity and rest of the part is just 25 percent that means graph theory information theory so these topics are the healthy topics if you are good in them, you have won the race. Okay, so by seeing this distribution, we have to put a, a special attention on the core mathematical foundations. So we'll be starting with linear algebra. Okay, fine. So what is this linear algebra is about? I hope you can see the screen, linear algebra. Okay. So it is, yeah. So it is a branch of mathematics that deals with the study of linear system of equations. Name it such as now, linear. Algebra, algebra is a system of equations. System of equations. Okay, so if you are dealing with a system of equations and that too linear, then it's linear algebra. And in linear algebra, you are having vectors, lines, planes, matrices, you are having many things. Especially in linear algebra, we are, we have the things to focus, that's vectors and matrices. These are the two things which we have to focus vectors and the matrices okay and the topics which will come in regards to them are your eigenvalues eigenvectors linear transformations okay so these are some topics which will come and we'll see also ahead in our study okay so what you will be available here multiple times i did made that okay currently we are focusing upon structured data structured means you are having a data sheet 
Excel, Excel file. Okay, you are having a data sheet. Okay, let us suppose this data sheet we got from the industry, from the client, and we want to work on this data sheet. So this is what you will be available. Okay, fine. And with this data, you have to perform your data science and ML techniques. That means you have to perform the analysis. Okay. And you have to develop a model. Analysis and modeling. That's what you have to do. So how you will approach? You are having data. Ultimately, you are having data points. Just make it more clear. You are having data points. Point. Okay, sir. Point. Point. What it? What it is? Sir, uh, this is point, sir. Okay. And we are having entities, no? Entities like scalar and vector. Scalar means which are not having any direction, just only magnitude. For example, if I do write 2, it's scalar. But if I do write 2 i cap, now it is having a direction. It's a vector quantity. So we are having entities or quantities, uh, scalar and the vector. If I do write somewhere in this white sheet 2, it's a scalar. No direction. What it signify is just a magnitude. Okay. However, I need to locate a point because point requires a location. I need to locate it. Okay. So, if this is the case, for example, I do make a axis, x axis. Here I am locating 2. Okay. So, this is 1D because I am having only one x axis. This is 1D and 2 is present on it. Now, I can make 2D, X and Y, and I can locate a point here. Okay, I can locate a point here. That is 3, 3, for example, some 3, 3. Okay, 3, 3. This is a point present in X, Y plane. This 2, it is present in only x plane. So I can define 2 by 2i. If I say x is having i as a unit vector, i, because at least one dimension is there, na? x is a dimension, na? one dimension is there, so I am saying 2i. And if I need to define this point 3, 3, then I will be writing 3i plus 3j, where i is a unit vector in direction of x, j is a unit vector in direction of y, unit vector, unit vector, that means whose magnitude is 1, unit vector like now, vector, vector, not uh, uh, vector divided by its magnitude is called as a unit vector. Okay, vector divided by its magnitude is called as a unit vector. Okay, so here I am saying V cap. This is a unit vector. Okay. Fine, so it's having like uh, one component, one part of your vector. So it's a unit vector. Okay. So 3i plus 3j, this is how you can define a vector, v vector. 
okay so what you do have in data you are having features x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 you know that i do work upon a lot of data i do share the project you've seen and you like that and that's the reason you are present here okay so you are having this excel sheet these, these are the features present in the actual sheet तो ये जो फीचर्स हैं दीज फीचर्स x1, x2, I can say that they are columns, they are dimensions, more appropriate, obviously they are features. If I say dimensions, I am having six dimensions. I am having six dimensions, six features, six dimensions. So if this is X1, now very, very, very important topic I am discussing. You are having six features in a data. That means you are having six dimensions. If this is X1, this is X2. This is X3, this is X4, this is X5, this is X6. You are having six dimensions that all the dimensions, all the dimensions you are representing and they are perpendicular in nature they are perpendicular all are perpendicular to each other okay all are perpendicular why perpendicular because perpendicular is the easiest way to represent a data there are different representations also like polar so however we are taking cartesian this is Cartesian coordinate system. Okay. So you are having a data set. You are seeing six features in the data set. That actually means six features, six dimension data. And you have to make all them perpendicular to each other. And now if I put an entry, for example, x1 is having a value 2, x2 is having a value 3, this is having 2.5, this is having 1, this is having like uh, uh, 10, and this is having some something value like 4.7. So on every dimension, okay, x1, this value, x2, this value, x3, this value, x3, x4, x5, these values. Now, so all this will be, you know, having values. So I will be writing them separated by comma. Okay, separated by comma. And you can make a vector to that point. So ye jo hai, these are defining the coordinates. Ye coordinates hai, six coordinates. Hai. Okay, so two comma one comma 10 comma 3.5 etc of a point coordinates of a point which is present in a 6d six dimensional data may take a 6d dimensional may ye point hai. so every entry every entry here will represent a point in a 6d I hope you are understanding what I am trying to say. And this is the major thing. Okay, why? You, you should ask a question. No, sir, why you are, you are saying 35% linear algebra? Because your data is made up of points only. And you have to represent the, those points with the help of a vector. You have to organize those points in a form of a matrix. 
यू कॉन्ट गेट अवे विद दट ओके फाइन सो दिस इज योर डेटा रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑल राइट एंड लेट्स गो विद द बेसिक्स here it is you can see the gif i am having a 2d vector two dimensional vector space we are having two vectors present in it so obviously you know what, what was here a point there is also one point you are making a vector to a you are making a vector to b so if the point is 1 comma 2 you can represent it in the form of a vector like 1 2 here if the point is minus 3 minus 2 so you can represent it with a vector like minus 3 minus 2 this is how you can represent it in a form of a vector minus 3 minus 2 okay so in vectors also you are having you are having row major or column major okay that means if you are representing the points in this way this is row row major and if you are representing the points in this way this is column major so this is row this is column column major row major so here you are representing the points in column major okay fine so this is 2d vector space that's what we called as a 2d vector space and here i made the same thing 6d vector space for you to explain about your data set this is 6d vector space okay fine now we can apply algebraic operations mathematical operations over the vectors in the matrices okay so again vector i told that uh, uh it's magnitude and direction so here we are having magnitude and direction this is a vector okay this is a vector then what is a matrix let's differentiate between vector and matrix see if you are having one dimensional okay if you are having 1d okay one dimension then we say it's a vector okay one one d vector but if you are having more than one dimension okay then we can say that it is a matrix it can be represented in a form of a matrix okay so here here 1 2 and minus 3 minus 2 they are saying that okay it's a 2d vector space but you are having two dimensional data okay two dimension it's quite clear that this is a 2d vector space that means it's a two dimensional data okay fine so so two dimension it doesn't matter that you are representing it in the form of 1 2 it is a it is a matrix but but with lower rank so we are defining it as a vector we are defining it as a vector okay what what it means with the rank i will also explain but here if i do write 1 2 3 4 4 this is a matrix this is actually a matrix okay so here is a matrix and this is a vector okay so matrix is high dimension okay we are writing here as 2d we can have a 3d matrix also 2d matrix 3d matrix that means high, higher dimension we are not having high dimensional vectors no vector 
okay vector is in a direction for example here here what you what you made this is this is a vector and it's in a direction in this direction okay this is a vector so vector is a unidirectional okay it's like a unidirectional fine so if i do make like this thing and this i am representing a point so this is a vector okay 2 comma 3 so this is a vector that's why i said 1d it's a unidirectional all right and then i can write 2i plus 3j because we are having j component also but if you are having only but if you are having only one point okay so uh, for example like this this is the case for example this uh, x axis this is x axis and i am having a point 2 here if I'm not having any direction, if I'm not having any direction, then it's a scalar. Okay, then it's a scalar. If I'm not having any direction, if it's a scalar. But if you are adding a dimension here, we are adding a dimension. And if I'm saying that, okay, X represents, uh, uh, okay, X represents a dimension or a direction. Then if I do define it with 2i, then it's a vector. Then it's a vector. Okay, so generally now we are having... Uh, scalar and the vector uh, entities for example uh, weight weight there's a difference between weight and a mass mass is a scalar that means we are having 2 kg mass but the weight is acceleration with the mass okay and a mass into acceleration okay so that will be 2 kg downwards towards the center of the earth okay that's what we say weight Okay, we define it's a vector quantity. Mass is a scalar quantity. Only the 2 kg. Okay, only the magnitude is present. So, if that's the thing. So, vector is in some direction. Okay, so here 2i plus 3j. That's a value of a vector and here is the direction. But a matrix, actually I am not talking in a matrix in a direction. Matrix is not in a direction. It's a high dimensional representation of a data. That's what a matrix means. Higher order. Okay, high order representation. High order representation of data. Representation. Presentation. Or high dimension representation of the data. Okay, it, you can have a 2D matrix, 3D matrix, 4D matrix, 5D matrix. But as the dimension increases, now you, you have to change the name. 2D, 3D I can afford. 2D, 3D I can afford with the name matrix. But if the dimension increases more, then I have to rename it as tensor. Okay, up to 2D, 3D I can afford that it is a matrix. But if it is having much more dimension, then it will be a tensor. Okay, so in deep learning and rest of the cases, we do have the high dimensional data. Okay, so okay that has been but he, here also okay i'm telling you about what it means to be as a high dimension okay more than 3d so that will be a tensor up to 2d that is matrix 2d 3d and at 1d we are saying that it is a vector okay it's a vector quantity very important concepts okay to know about that uh, uh what is a point what is a vector quantity whom we are calling as a vector space how to represent them what is a matrix okay and what kind of operations you can perform so uh, you know that uh, quite easy as i was telling addition you can add the vectors you can add the matrices okay you can subtract the matrices subtract the vectors that's what you can do okay Fine. So here in my notes, vector addition is performed. This is the vector addition. Okay. That means adding vector with a vector. Okay. So uh, digit by digit now you are doing the addition. Okay. So 1 with minus 3 is minus 2. 2 with minus 2 is 0. Okay. So digit by digit you are doing the addition. Okay. However, you have to take care of the direction okay direction so if i again make here like this is 
a vector this is a vector all right so what will be the resultant vector this will be the resultant okay so that's what we have studied in the physics all right so if this is a vector this is b vector this is c vector then a vector plus b vector is equal to c vector this is the resultant this is how i am defining the addition and if i put a minus sign then you have to reverse the direction okay then it will be like uh, okay if we want to change like so if this is a vector and uh, if you want to do minus now so so like this is b vector okay change the direction all right change the direction and this will be like c vector so it will be a vector minus b vector is equal to c vector this is how you are going to do the subtraction of the vectors okay so we change the direction then things will change okay automatically so vector is all about the direction so it's in in certain direction so i am saying that that's why it's 1d and okay so this is what you are seeing in that addition of the vectors you can ha huh, direction that's what they have uh, shown here addition subtraction okay vector operations okay vectors do follow various operations properties they do have a properties and i hope you have also done uh, in your uh, maths also that means uh, you do okay addition i told okay addition we can have a multiplication also that is the dot okay addition multiplication okay that is a dot so this is the property commutative a plus b equal to b plus a this is commutative with dot also it can be commutative a dot b equal to b dot a okay so this is the dot product dot operation very important you will study ahead okay this is associative a plus b plus c equal to a plus b plus c that means the brackets where you are choosing with respect to dot also it is performing zero element that means if I, if i add zero vector to a vector then the result is zero means a not zero uh, a because zero zero vector i am not going to do a, a putting any change in the a will be the answer if i add zero to it distributive that means a dot b plus c that will be ab plus plus ac this is distribution additive identity that means 1 dot a equal to a if i multiply a unit or identity with a i will going to get the same value and this is inverse okay if i add a with its um uh, negative so the answer is a zero element so this is inverse all right so these are the properties of vectors fine and uh, obviously very much important because we have to apply these operations over the data because we are representing data in form of vectors later on we are going to represent that means vectors then since we are having high dimensional data so we'll be going to representing them in a matrix then we'll apply the matrix operations so these are the operations which you can apply over the vectors then we'll push uh, ahead in a matrix so we'll study the matrix properties matrix operations okay so this is what uh, is uh, like uh, about the vector concepts okay and uh, linear algebra linear function okay if i say linear functions so we are having the equations we are having the algebraic equation so why i am saying about the equations here why because if i do talk about this data set which is having six features okay so six features i 
I am obviously going to represent them in a form of a certain equation, like uh, like this beta x one, beta one x one, beta two x two, beta three x three. Just like now, you do right a x plus b y plus c z equal to d. Okay, this is an equation so you have to represent your data features according to some equation that is why we are studying them under linear algebra and whatever be the points which are present in these features we are going to put it here in this equations okay so those points representations their distribution we are understanding with the that means their their representation and solving this equation we use matrix we can solve the system of linear equations with the matrices that we'll see ahead so what we learned uh, today because it's um, I, i hope it's again a very important lecture today okay and uh, you did focus upon the mathematical concepts related to a data point vector matrices and if it is possible from your side also kindly do revise okay so that's how we are going to proceed and understand the concepts now anything you want to say over the lecture you understood what i taught so what's the difference between vector and matrix that's what, what i, I told sir because uh, say, vector is a short notation a yeah, small uh, notation of a matrix okay i'm i'm telling that vector is uni in some direction okay so with lower rank that is a vector low rank data that is a vector fine but if i make higher dimension okay 2d 3d that is a matrix so high dimensional data is represented in a form of a matrix low dimensional data is represented is in a form of a vector okay and so, they, they should have some direction yeah. then only we can define a, with a vector yes okay so if i say uh, agar mera data aisa hai jiske 